What? It's time now for my two favorite librarians. Brought to you by Copper Tree Boutique in Dale's Grand Market, located in beautiful, historic downtown Amherst. Hi, this is my two favorite librarians. I'm Denise Corey. I'm Chantelle Taylor, and hopefully this is the last week with this voice. Today we're going to talk about books with great first lines. Yeah, you sound terrible. Forever. I don't, I don't know why you can't get better. Maybe you're broken. I need to, like, get some citrus. Except it gives me coal source. <laughs> Your life is terrible. <laughs> so, a great first line can really suck you right into a book. Who's there? <laughs> when I hear that, I want to be like, who's on first? <laughs> That's from Hamlet. Yes, because it's when he sees the ghost. Yes. Or is it the guard? Oh. Maybe I have to go back and reread Hamlet. I was going to say, I looked yesterday when I was like Googling for things and I thought it was the guard. Is uh, Macbeth ghosts? Macbeth is ghosts. Hamlet also has ghosts. Oh God, we have to read more things. <laughs> <laughs> Hamlet is ghost because it's the ghost of his father that tells him that I'm just going to ruin Hamlet for everybody. Yes. It's, spoiler alert. I mean, it only came out in the 1600s, so uh, it's the ghost of his father that tells him that his uncle killed him. Yeah, okay. So, so anyway, moving on. <laughs> I still remember reading the first line of Almost Moon by Alice Siebold. I had borrowed it when it first came out, and that's like back in 2007. I'd taken it home and opened it at lunchtime and read the first line, which is, when all is said and done, killing my mother came easily and then I thought oh how am I supposed to go back to work after lunch now I want to know what happens I never remember first lines of books even if they're amazing I never remember it first line but it does make a difference it is something that will like suck me in or be like oh, I'll read this later yeah so I looked up a couple famous first lines I did too I mean the obvious really super famous one is it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Should we, like, get people to tweet us with what they think <laughs> the book is? Yeah, do you free know... Free library books if you uh, know the answer. <laughs> Only free library books if you know the answer. Otherwise, it's free library books. Um, should we tell them the answer? Well, I guess so. That would ruin everything if we didn't. That one is from Pride and Prejudice. I love that line. I do too. And I'm not a big Pride and Prejudice fan. I know I a lot of people who are, but including a librarian who works for the community college in Cape Breton who has like Jane Austen stuff tattooed on her. Okay, I'm not that extreme. <laughs> How about Anna Karenina? Ugh, yours are also boring. All happy families are alike. Each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. How about The Martian by Andy Weir? I'm pretty much effed. Yeah, she can't say the rest of the word. It's not allowed on the radio. How about... But I remember reading The Martian, and you start right away, and you're like, oh, okay, things have really gone badly for this person. You know that right uh -huh. from the get-go. How about this quote of a book I'm not sure if you've read or not. Okay. This um, is my favorite book in all the world, though I've never read it. Is it from the book thief? No. It's from The Princess Bride. Oh, I love The Princess Bride. But I've watched the movie way more times than I've read the book. I really need to read that book. That might be on my TBR this year. It's funny. It's very much tongue-in-cheek like the movie is. Okay, how about this one? Oh, now it's just turned into quizzing me. <laughs> yeah. Where's Papa going with that axe? Said Fern to her mother as they were setting the table for breakfast. Charlotte's Web. I'm just like, that's not going to go well. Well, it isn't for some poor animal. So here's one that I saw, and I love this first line. It's, called, uh, it's a book called The Crow Road by Ian Banks. The first line is, it was the day my grandmother exploded. Now, I'm not sure if I can read this book by Ian Banks because I tried to read The Wasp Factory by him and I was super grossed out by that book. 
could not do it, could not finish it. So I don't know if I can read The Crow Road, but that line does make me want to pick it up and find out. That is good. How about Once Upon a Time There Was a Pair of Pants? Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants? Yes. I mean, it was the pair of pants thing that gave it well, away. Well, sometimes, like, how does one describe Artemis Fowl? Various psychiatrists have tried and failed. Obviously, Artemis Fowl. I don't know that that was a super compelling line to me. Although it was I to me. I loved Artemis Fowl. Artemis Fowl. Do you have any more? Uh, yeah, I have a ton. Okay. There was a boy called Hustis Clarence Scrub, and he almost deserved it. What is that from? The Voyage of the Dawn Treader by C.S. Lewis. Okay, how about books that you've read? Oh, I don't remember any. I just <laughs> told you I don't. Okay, actually, I have read this one. I didn't remember. It was as black in the closet as old blood. Uh, I may have actually just looked down when you put your finger cheater. on the page. So now I know that it's the sweetness in the bottom of the pie. There was a hand in the darkness and it held a knife. The Graveyard Book. Oh, by I Neil li- Gaiman. See, I didn't remember that first line, but I loved the graveyard. I book. loved the graveyard book. I love everything that Neil Gaiman writes. I like the graveyard book. <laughs> wow, that was not uh, stunning endorse- endorsement of his writing. I accidentally vaporized my pre-algebra teacher, "The Lightning Thief" by Rick Rodan. I never read any of those. <sighs> so, so good. Okay, how about this one? She, she's holding the paper, paper up so that I can't see Technically, it. Technically, this is more than one line. It's cheating, but... You're a cheater pants. Whatever. The sun did not shine. It was too wet to play. So we sat in the house all that cold, cold, wet day. That is one line. I sat there with Sally. We sat here, we too. And we said how we wish we had something to do. The cat in the hat. Oh. I, d- I could not even tell you when I last read The Cat in the Hat. I have more. <laughs> uh, I'm having super fun playing this game, but I don't... Okay, go on. Go on. In an old house in Paris that was covered in vines lived 12 little girls in two straight lines. Oh, that's uh, Eloise? No, Madeline. Madeline. I could see the picture, but I couldn't remember her name. Juiced had two problems, the moon and his mustache. Six of Crows by Leah Bardugo. Uh, I didn't read that one either. See, now I just sound like I'm not really very well read. I just picked, like, not the ones I knew you were picking, like Anna Karenna with the extra syllable. and Anna Karenina. I, I'm not adding that extra N. I'm just not. <laughs> Uh, you know what? I took the time to read Anna Karenina. It was like... Did you actually get through it? I read the whole thing, yeah. It was like 600,000 pages long. And I have owned Les Miserables for two years now. I have still not cracked that book. So. I don't blame you. Use it to kill bugs. What are you reading right now? Well, I'm currently reading a book with a great first line. Are you? It's called Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. And the first line is, once upon a time, Chloe Brown died. And then the second line is, nearly. Oh, they just kind of play with your emotions right there. So she almost gets hit by a car. A car whizzes right by her and hits a building instead of her. And Chloe Brown has been chronically ill her whole life. She's a computer nerd. And after this near-death experience, she makes a list of things that she wants to do. She wants to travel the world with just hand luggage. She wants to, I can't even remember all the things because it's a romance, so some of them are sexy things. (laughs) And in order to, she wants to ride a motorcycle. That was one. She wants to move out of her parents' house because she's been living in her parents' like luxurious house for her whole life. And so in order to do all these things, she goes to the guy that she's sort of kind of spying on. And his name is Red. Because he lives like she can see into his apartment from her window or something. And so she's like looking at him, but it's creepy. But That cool. sounds creepy. Yeah, It's amazingly good. So, so far, I'm really loving it. It also sounds like uh, that man should buy some curtains. Well, duh. 
the book I'm currently reading did not have a great first line. I'm reading The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna. So that made a few best of lists from 2019. What did she write recently? The Nightingale, is that Kristen? She wrote The Nightingale. She's she's put out a lot. Yes. Probably 25-ish books at this point. So Really that many? Okay. Yeah. Firefly Cloak, I think was her. I don't know that. I can see one like book cover in my mind. I think it's Nightingale. So in this it's told from the point of view of Lenny or Lenora. She's a 13 year old girl and this is just shortly after the Vietnam War. Her father was a POW and when he comes home he has a really terrible PTSD and so he's very volatile and He's trying to find his way back into society, and he's doing this by, uh, they move around a lot, she's lived in a lot of places, and he loses his job a lot, and then he inherits this cabin in Alaska. So, they move to Alaska. And then he kills everyone. Well, let's just say that all heck breaks loose. And, uh, yeah. It's interesting. Who did you say it was by again? Kristen Hanna. It Kristen just went right. Hanna. Completely zoned out there. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's depressing. I'm not listening anymore. <laughs> it's not Canadian. I know, but Alaska is pretty much like Canadian adjacent. <laughs> um, what's on the library this week? I do have things written down this week. Um, on February 4th, Evil Genius will be Yarn Giraffes. Did I say at the Amherst Library at 3 p.m.? And uh, on February 5th, Teen Anime Club will be happening in Oxford. That's all I have. Those are the same things that I wrote down. I feel like maybe there's only two things happening this week. <laughs> I mean, the usual stuff is happening once upon a time. Twisted Stitchers, that stuff yes. will be happening. And if you want to see what's happening at the library, you can just go on to our website www.cumberlandpubliclibraries.ca and you'll find our calendar of events there and you'll find all kinds of fun things sometimes we have lists of good books and sometimes we have you're really reaching I'm just <laughs> trying to think of things you can also find our socials on there we're on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram Yay! so uh, what's up next week? Next week, we're going to be talking, and by we, I mean me, about romance, because it will be Valentine's Day, or almost. Yeah. It will be the week of Valentine's Day. I'm going to find all the most hardcore, dubious consent. Uh, no, I'm not, because I hate reading those books. Maybe I'll try to read a romance. Maybe I'll... Oh, can I recommend one? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> she looks super gleeful and I am now scared. I won't make you read a vampire one but maybe you should read a beard book like maybe you should read Cletus. We'll see you next week. Bye. My two favorite librarians brought to you by Copper Tree Boutique in Dales Grand Market located in beautiful historic downtown Amherst. <laughs>